Thanks so much, Zoe. Yep. This will be a match indeed. Some gaming will be occurring. The San Francisco Shock, who were undefeated in the regular season, maybe if you had to nitpick perfection, had a s shorter run to the kickoff clash, going off against the Boston Uprising. But there's some there's some hopium, there's some uh, faithium in the air, you can say, after a surprising win against the Justice recently. Yeah, Boston, uh, they're not looking terrible, but San Francisco Shock are looking like this is their meta to dominate in. And with their new addition of Mikey, they've covered up a slight hole, maybe, in Kaluja's hero pool. Admittedly, Kaluja's been doing very well as the only tank that was available for the San Francisco Shock for the entirety of the kickoff clash, but now bringing in a ball and dive main tank specialist in Mikey has given them a little bit more extra power for these control maps, and it's something that both these teams now share. Itzal seems to be uh, shoehorned into being the wrecking ball player at the moment, and we know that Itzal has got a great mind for dives, Lemon. But the thing is, the thing about a great dive is that it's all about communication and for a while we didn't see Itzal in because it meant MCD had to come in as well to make sure they could communicate effectively. Now MCD is going to be in. Let's have a quick look at the Boston Uprising roster to see who's going to be trying to pull off this dive alongside Itzal. Interestingly, we have both MCD and Crimzo, so Faith is on the bench for now. The main support has been taken back and the Wrecking Ball has been brought in. Okay, no Faithium for now. But still, I, I, I do agree that the mixed roster situation for Boston, I wonder if that's difficult, right? Because like you said, when Itzal is in, they speak Korean. When Punk is in, they speak English. So I wonder if that structure really affects them at all. But when we look at Itzal's win rate, I'm sorry, it's just kind of low when he plays. And it's not even like his fault to his credit. He kind of came in late, right? Was still kind of in getting integrated into the team, but they didn't make the kickoff clash. So they had time to kind of bring Itzal and just get a ton of scrims in. And I think this meta could be good for Itzal because he has a really solid Hammond, but he needs to improve fast because Boston needs some wins. And like the desk said, no one's going to lie to you and say they're going to win against the Shock. But it's just, can they make steadily, uh, steady improvements every day? Yeah, can you stand up against this roster? San Francisco Shock, who today are, of course, going to be rolling out with their new boy, Mikey, on the Wrecking Ball. We expect to see some pretty brutal dives from Proper's Tracer in conjunction with Mikey. And Sam's actually proven himself to be super flexible, playing the Reaper, the Echo, a little bit of Sojourn, a little bit of Genji. Sam is being the quintessential flex DPS for San Francisco Shock, who appears to be specializing in control maps. And I'm not sure what would make a player better suited to the control maps, but maybe the wider variety of heroes that Sam has compared to Kilo, who's a little bit more focused in on the hit scans means that when we're looking at the varying topographies for three stages of each control map, that Sam just presents a better overall option. I'm just glad to see the shock that are slowly integrating uh, their new signings just immediately off the bat. Because when I saw Mikey got signed, I was thinking they were going to keep him on the bench for a while. Shock kind of do that. They sign people to keep him on the bench. They kind of develop them and see because they prioritize wins and being dominant in the league. But Mikey is always appearing on control maps ever since his signing. But beyond that, Kaluj has most of the playtime. We do go to Ilios for our first map. And with that Hammond that Mikey provides, it synergizes really well with Proper's Tracer. Now, Sam, just Echo players in general, just have to be careful if there's a so Sojourn to be present, but Boston haven't played Sojourn yet. And I wouldn't mind seeing it just because it's very strong right now, but is it something Valentine or Victoria want to learn or can pull out in an official quite yet? One of the things that makes me a little bit bullish on Boston Uprising is that uh, they've had a couple weeks of scrims now with a downsized roster. Of course, being a professional organization, Boston Uprising, uh, they, they downsized a little bit. They lost Marvel, they lost Striker, just deciding to commit to the Valentine Victoria DPS line and allowing its Alan Punk to share the duties of tanks between two instead of three. And that means Boston Uprising, they are getting a little bit more time with Itzal. They are getting used to these dives and maybe we're going to see a little bit less random random substitution and therefore potentially a touch more consistency from a Boston Uprising. San Francisco Shock though, they are going to go for the Echo Trace and that's actually going to be mirrored here by the Boston Uprising. A full mirror matchup as Finn and Violet, two legendary flex supports, are going up against some veterans of the league in their own right. 
Yeah, even the Ana is making an appearance too, so the Nano's give, being usually given over to the Echo. Although, Nanoing your Hammond has been seen on maps like this just for some kind of sustained Sam almost dipping in the Echo duel. And it's Valentine who reemerges as Sam's kind of focus got drifted away from the supports showing themselves. So the point is unlocked. Mikey is there first. He's been anti from Crimson from the high ground as Mikey has to escape into the shadows just to live. Both tracers are down, four versus four. Boston are on the point, not getting the full capture yet. Mikey got healed back up, so he gets the bowl back in. And with the patch, uh, Hammonds have a lot more knockback. So people are getting tossed up, and Sam got dragged at a distance. And with the balance turning to Boston, they siege the high ground, and they'll manage to cap the point first. The Newton's Cradle of Ilios has managed to keep Boston from control for but a moment, but now it is all but assured. San Francisco Shot kind of losing the initiative there in allowing Sam to duel in an area that didn't have great coverage from Violet, so long-range heals weren't available for Sam, and that meant there was no real finishing power, no focusing beam for the San Francisco Shock, and that really did hurt them in the late fight here. Crimson ready with the Nano, given over to Valentine. Good initiative, Echo, Nano, Valentine. Not really able to dive Sam quite well. There's a good stickies from Sam as Valentine hopes to escape. He's beamable, and Sam will do just that, no matter how Valentine tried to escape. 30% for the Boston Uprising. Four on five for them. Or, well, against them, technically. And they're just trying to bunker down, and Itzel gets chased down by Proper. You see the flip starting from the Shock. Now, even Mikey gets nanoed. I don't think it's for two necessary, but hey, just gonna squash Boston like a bug and go next. Maybe it's actually superfluous. Chromzo gets slept, manages to heal themselves, and that's the call for Mikey to exit the fray right there. Boston Uprising are coming up upon a slew of their own ultimates as a San Francisco Shock. It might be that this is a heavy spending event for both of these teams, but the question is, who does Valentine wish to copy here? Would you go for the Wrecking Ball and try and get that quick minefield, or maybe go double tracer to try and overwhelm these vulnerable backline supports? We didn't see some... Oh, that tree had it coming. Oh, the spot damage still got Violet. Didn't think... Uh, thought it was maybe on the other side of the tree. And didn't get the notification. Mine's on the point, though, for Boston. Space created for no one to have. Boston are down two. So not really a point that they can take back at this moment. Shock will ult too, even if things start getting hairy. Uh, Finn can just tr use Transcendence and hold the space. So Shock are still in a great position. And it feels like Boston actually spent a lot more getting into that fight than, Bo than San Francisco Shock used to defend it. So this is not a great economic sign of the times to come. It's recession moments for Boston Uprising. Still, though, a duplicate ready to go. Valentine going to dodge away and pick up the Mega Health Pack rather than tax the resources of Crimson and MCD, who would have to move out of their positions in order to heal it. Yeah, we did see some copies on the Ana, like free patch just with how strong she was, but with the uh, Biotic Grenade duration being reduced by a second, it's not, like, it's not like horrible, maybe not be the first choice. And Shock continue to just pick apart Boston as they rotate to the point, and Victoria is just getting sent down to the, to the drink. So 85% plus for the Shock, one more fight left, and they got the ults to do it. 10% remaining. And Sam might even go for an early duplicate here, potentially onto the tank to just knock them around and mess with their formation. Keep those supports off the high ground where MCD and oh, Crimson. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. <gasps> that's worse. <laughs> oh, Boston, that's worse. Yeah, Boston were so depending on that touch from Itzel, but you see that, was it 36% knockback uh, buff for Hammonds? For, and yeah, 36, 40%, something like that. Yeah, and lots Boston, of knockback. Itzel just got thrown. And just by the time that happened, MCD could react, maybe use Transcendence to touch a point, but I think he was too far away. That was all depending on Itzel, so that was a huge play from Mikey. Oh, excellent, we got the replay here. See how this one went down. Oh, it's actually Victoria falling off the map. Oh, I was hoping for the verticality on that blink, but betrayed by the mechanics, Lemon. We're heading over to Ruins next, and Victoria might be inclined to play a Widowmaker here. We know that Victoria does prefer a lot of the flick scan options that are available, and Valentine, of course, being the one playing the Tracer would also hint towards that. On the other side, Sam is going to get a little bit faster and has control of the Megas. This is so important in the Wrecking Ball versus Wrecking Ball because the Wrecking Ball relies heavily upon the Mega Health Packs to heal themselves up because you can't get a huge amount of healing from the Brig and the Zen. So uh, I'm not questioning the Victoria Widow. Uh, a lot of teams don't 
sometimes have gone away from the Widow just because it's easy to LOS away from the Widow if you are the other team. It's Valentine on the Tracer, which is a newer look. Usually it's Victoria who plays it. So we'll see if maybe because Victoria had a shaky performance at the start. You missed that second Blake, you know, getting your head about it. Valentine is going to see if he can bring out the Tracer just to pressure the point and shock at the point first. Sam will be able to cloak into the back. And now he'll probably be going after MCD and Crimzo. You see that Sam already on that hunt. Already finds Victoria on the low ground. So Victoria grapples back up into the loving arms of Crimzo. Shock just getting collapsed on. That's a pretty good dive from Itzel. Great pile drive from Itzel. It's also somehow managing to win out with the wall against Mikey is very concerning, given that Mikey had preferential access to that mega health pack. Maybe it was stolen away or something by proper when he was dancing against the Widowmaker. But either way, maybe a little bit more admin needs to be done here from Sam to make sure that Itzau just cannot get free heals and has to rely on MCD and Crimzo. What a shot from Victoria. So that's why they're on the Widow. Yeah, Victoria is playing pretty close to the point, which is helping him get a lot more lines of sight and get headshots like that in places you're not expecting a widow to be. But if, as a as a counterpoint, Mikey will have a lot better access to Victoria because Victoria is not playing the back of ruins in a safer position. They see Mikey is just having issues getting close to Victoria without taking insane amounts of poke, and Valentine being on the tracer can get that chase down. So Bossa can use Victoria as this as bait, I guess and hope that they can get the kills once Shock takes too much poke. Forcing now a fight on the point, San Francisco Shock have began to cap Valentine with a bomb in hand, looks to stick it onto the supports, but no one's going to be there to catch it. And now, Lemon, that window is useless from Crimzo. It was a big flank play that amounted to zero. Yeah, just trying to zone out the, the left lane for Boston. Even if you don't kill anything with the Ant Matrix, just its presence forces Shock to rotate in positions you want them to be in, so Boston, Doing a good job so far of holding on to... I was like, I thought they were going to hold on to the boy. Guess not. They just got shoved back by the Shock. Proper to the back. He's already killed two. Even Violet is on the front line. So Shock will push Uprising away. And now Sam will be able to set up on the high ground in an advanced position in order to use the EMP to engage this. If you can get an EMP and a Mikey Power Driver at once, that will close to wipe the Boston Uprising. MCD needs to die, though, before the one second is elapsed and the Transcendence can be used to counter the engagement. See that Boston just holding on to the high ground to help uh, Victoria. And what an EMP from Sam. Just the initial 40% da damage and health gone. Obliterates MCD before he even has time to use Transcendence. And I don't think you even use it in that case. I mean, you're in your spawn room doors. You want to use that to sustain on the point. So Boston will just take a momentary L and Shock will just continue to hold them. Valentine now moving forward about Sam to harass them. Violet's forced to pop the rally to keep the San Francisco Shock safe. Now maybe pinned in by Mikey with the mines, but those can easily be torn on through. And it looks like it's a back cap here for the Boston Uprising, forcing Mikey back. It's a shocker still like sieging. Pulse spawn, that sticks on the Violet. And Finn's gone too. 99% though from the shock is Boston. We're trying to work on that touch? foot that entire time. And Itzel dies on the point, and there's no one there to touch. Boston actually, we're trying to, we're actually gonna win that fight. <laughs> so the shock will take map one. <laughs> Unlucky. The rogue mercenary party of the supports, Finn and Viola in the back line, just demanding that attention, demanding the transcendence, sending Itzel over to fight on the point. He simply can't win a two versus one against a tracer and another wrecking ball. Too much of the damage is eaten up and they can't access the mega health pack either because it's been hacked away by Sam. And it means that San Francisco Shock simply have to watch and wait as Boston Uprising pump their little hams and try to get to a point, but to no avail. That's a heartbreaking way to lose the first map, Lemon, but Boston Uprising can try and strike back after this break.
Lightning doesn't strike twice, has never met the San Francisco shot. Some of the most hardcore carry performances that I've ever seen. Just the depth of talent on their roster that can't be denied. I mean, what more can you ask in the shot? This is going to be a wild ride. Violet is cracked. Ooh. He's out of his mind. I say that just as okay. That pace with everything right oh, now. Jesus Christ, dude. Sam is deadlifting right now, actually. Finish is doing so much. Cleans it up like DPS and Yarda. San Francisco has cemented themselves as the greatest team in Overwatch. Spawn holds and shenanigans. The San Francisco Shock, to no one's surprise, is doing quite well. Took map number one of Ilios against the Boston Uprising, who are still searching for kind of their identity in this meta. But... Won't be searching for much longer. They got some substitutes that'll help things out. Indeed, Punk is coming in, Lemon. This is the player that the desk wanted to see. Custer said that Boston Uprising needed to really just settle on keeping Punk in, embrace the Sigma. It's the same feedback that we had for Toronto at the moment. Sigma seeming like a very powerful option to keep those double flex supports safe. And that's why MCD and Crimzo are still in as a duo instead of Faith, who's a little bit better at things like the main support, the Brigitte, the Lucio, the Mercy. Whereas MCD, a little bit better at the Zen. Crimzo, a fantastic Baptiste, and of course, Really good at Anna as well. On the other side, San Francisco Shock, we've taken out their control specialists of Sam and, of course, Mikey to bring in Kilo and Kaluge, which means Sigma and Sojourn in my books. Yeah, I've been wanting to see Kilo Sojourn. I'm very excited uh, for this meta for the Shock. I mean, they just seem meta-proof. They have a player for everything, and especially having a, a, an incredible Tracer player and proper, you just... This is a great team, and I don't expect them to lose anytime soon, and they're not a team that choke up easily. So I'm excited to see how this next map's gonna go. It is I can vault. So Boston, kind of the questions and everything, all the weight is on their shoulders of how they're gonna figure things out. Now, I was hoping they would bring Faith in for some Brigida, because I feel like Boston need an answer to Proper's Tracer, and a Brigida is nice, especially with that additional knockback. Last time we saw Boston on Eichenwald, they got full held by Atlanta. They got absolutely smashed in, playing a lot of Zen, Bap, Sigma. Now, at least kind of like the, de the desk was alluding to, they played Valentine's May, so maybe you can kind of holster, uh, bolster uh, Uprising's Sigma Brawl by having a May to enable that, and that gives something for Valentine to do because the Tracer really wasn't it. And then Victoria, if you're gonna play Hanzo for the shield break, that's great, but Shock aren't really playing a Brawl, they're playing proper Tracer in Kilo Sojourn, which doesn't care about shield break. Yeah, Boston Uprising. Compared to their game against Atlanta Rain, which was an absolute travesty, honestly, from the Boston Uprising. Hopefully they've worked on their threat assessment here so they will have a potentially easier time in identifying where the threats are and how to deal with them. I would have loved to have seen Valentine maybe start walling off the uh, Sojourn after she uses her slide to get into an off angle because the Valentine May can do a good job of blocking off a Sojourn as well as being a consistent threat towards Proper's Tracer with the looming potential of the one-shot Icicle Headshot which keeps a Tracer kind of on their toes and a little bit fearful for their life. However, Boston Uprising going to be starting off on the defense instead. Victoria on the Hanzo here. 
is going to have to try and find a way to get angles onto a much more vulnerable San Francisco Shock backline, and that would require Kaluj being pressured to put his shield in a place that's more self-defense orientated than keeping Finn and Violet safe. Everyone expects the Widow jump snipe, so no one's even home for the Boston Uprising. We're playing the exact same composition that they did against the Atlanta Reign. So maybe a question of execution. To be fair, Kai was on another level on that Sojourn. So no Sojourn from the shock. Just mirroring at least the Hanzo for the shield break against Punk. Because if you can weaken those defenses, if you can take care of Punk's shield, then Shock are going to have no problem advancing and getting flanks. Proper is already harassing MCD. That's a very early immortality, too, from Crimzo. That's a very long cooldown. MCD is left to fend on his own, and Crimzo is already left to try and support Punk, who's at 50% HP. Boston Uprising are getting absolutely picked apart. Proper's just dominated for support line. There's no other way to say it. Coming in round the back, Victoria's next. Any aces for Proper? No, Kalu just taking Punk out in a Sigma versus Sigma. But you know what? That's one way to keep... Uh, I've heard you guys have been raving about those sojourns, but don't you forget, Proper's still the best tracer around, baby. MCD got absolutely wrecked there. Made to look silly by Proper with the blink text and making sure they're always aiming in the wrong place and looking at the wrong time. Boston Uprising now have at least the advantage of easy control of high ground. They don't have to purchase this real estate by investing any ultimates. Not that they have any to begin with. The only ultimate that's currently available, Lemon, is Proper's Pulse Bomb. And you can see Proper wrapping around the back at the moment. Express Delivery is on the cards. Yeah, Prozo needs to hold that immortality for that reason. It's probably hard to ult track if Proper even has Pulse Bomb, but he did have a great first fight. I mean, four kills out of five. So Proper early on that. Valentine has already scouted and marked that. Got the Sonic from Kilo just to make sure no one's inside of the castle. Of course, they know Boston's all up top. Uh, Victoria uh, uh, decides to jump backwards, try to avoid Proper. And Shock, uh, I don't think they've even lost anyone yet. MCD jumps to his death just to die on car, and Shock are flawless so far. At this point, Gravity has more kills than the Boston Uprising, but that's okay. It's a fundamental force of the universe. He's, uh... Oh, they were betrayed by the wall climb. Oh, that was, that's not Victoria's fault, actually. I think the wall climb kind of uh, just didn't trigger in time. Poor Victoria. Oh, well. So, number one, San Francisco Shock. Number two, Gravity. Good Dragon Strike, just right in the middle of the lane. Forces Shock to spread. And Boston, this is just for them to stabilize and get any kind of positioning. They're up, uh, their backs are against the wall. They're going to use the Ant Matrix. And there's a wall up from Valentine to just protect them. And the Shock have transcendent, so they have all the healing, all the sustain in the world. A Blizzard is thrown. A smart call from Valentine. And even the transcendents from MCD just to force up to help Boston get aggressive. But Shock didn't die, <laughs> so it's kind of tough. Looking back on the cart, you got a two, probably three versus two in favor of the Shock. Immortality up for Boston, but it's just a matter of time for the Shock get a clear point B win and five minutes for C. The individual mechanical outplays here for San Francisco Shock are just making Boston Uprising's attempts at crunches look a little bit silly. Because Boston Uprising, they play that well in terms of being able to bisect for San Francisco Shock. They got them split into a two and three. Both the supports were separate from Kaluj, Kilo, and Proper. But still, there weren't enough kills coming through. Boston Uprising just couldn't hit the shots they needed to because Kaluj was tanking so well in the back. And now, San Francisco, they have all of the tools that they need to try and take this last point. Valentine's on the flank and managed to scare off Kilo only for a second. Dragon Strike around the corner. This isolates Punk, and Shock won't engage on this. They grab Flux Punk, and this will kill him. Immortality drops, but Punk dies midair and never got into rage. The Shock just have so much momentum. First, second, and third blood every fight, and Boston just can't catch a break. I mean, this has to almost be a record. That's a four-minute time bank for the Shock. Eichenwald is mm, currently a little bit of a nightmare for Boston Uprising. Being full held by Atlanta Rain. <laughs> Watching it go down by only seven seconds is a little bit strange in Overwatch League. And Boston Uprising, this, is, this does seem to be a map that might not be their best. Admittedly, they have gone up against top teams on it thus far in Atlanta and San Fran. How, though, can they try and get a little bit more value out of their attack? 
previously full held by the Atlanta Reign. That was where it felt like Kai just managed to 1v5 them again and again on the Sojourn. And it really did feel like Boston Uprising were having significant issues with threat assessment and being able to make sure that Kai didn't feel safe to just hard peek these angles and go for the cheekier flanks. Finn goes to see what Victoria's Corpse is up to down there as we get ourselves a quick replay showing how Kaluj really opened this one up and Punk being isolated by that Dragon Strike was so smart. Valentine was on the flank and this is just someone who hasn't had an impact thus far and I think when it comes to Mei, this isn't like a solo hero put on the cape and, and deadlift. This is a, a hero that is designed to enable others. Now, Valentine's on the flank, didn't do anything. Then he had the Blizzard on point B. He had a Transcendence and Blizzard advantage on the point B fight that Boston did not win. And it's, you gotta communicate on taking down Immortalities and who your target's gonna be. You only have so much of a window of opportunity when you use these Blizzards. And you have to coordinate around Valentine or Punk, who is the natural leader to this team. But when you have these mixed rosters of some people speaking Korean and English, I wonder if that just breaks down. And as long as, but they're not, a, Boston are not a team that got booed, right? They went 0-2 against the Justice and forced the game five. Just, it's hard to boom the uprising. They're kind of used to losing and they're used to, they know this is an improvement stage for them. And they're gonna continue to work on improving now that MCD's dead and the Shock are just gonna pick them apart. And we are once again getting these similar vibes to Kilo hitting the headshots with the railgun. That being what tears apart Boston's chances early in these fights before we can even try and claim any space. Kilo needs to be cowed away from these angles, scared out of these peaks, so that he at least doesn't have this until Boston Uprising are up close. Yeah, Kilo charged that up from last fight too, and that's the patience of Kilo's sojourn. And it's very easy to charge that up thanks to the Sigma Shield of Punk. Boston, just in that last fight, were caught on rotations, and they just have to be decisive, right? Around this May, around the Sigma, and Punk just being very careful to not make any mistakes. As soon as that shield breaks, I mean, then it's a uh, shooting range for Kilo, and he has that 100 charge. He sees Crimson on the high ground who hides away. Victoria zones him off with the storm bow. Doesn't get the 100 charge pick that Kilo was looking for. That's a shock. Now actually gets to defend, and Boston accomplished some rotations on the left side, but still no kills yet. Proper and that Kilo are kind of playing from similar angles though, and at the moment, walled off, Kilo has to try and find themselves a headshot here with the railgun. Punk tries to zone them out, and now Boston Uprising are finally moving as a group. They've tried to acquiesce some space. Kilo might be forced to peek away now, and they can start to get some progress on the point lemon, but it's still bloodless thus far, and Crimzo's low. Very low, and the disruptor shot. Oh my god, I thought Crimson was gonna die to that Crim I mean, he's dead anyway. Took so much damage from They got zoned off his own immortality. And all of Boston were just trapping the shock using the air matrix from Crimso, but then proper snuck into the back and that just completely disrupted Boston's structure when they don't have healers that can pay attention to the fight. San Francisco Shock is just doing such a good job of disengaging as well, making Boston come into more exposed areas. Finn says, I'm still on zero deaths. Where are your DPS at, guys? Come on, come kill me. You want to play some Overwatch 2 today? Or are you just in spectator mode? I mean, they just bosses don't have a, a DPS that can contest the backline. I mean, who's really surprised that Finn hasn't died? Shock haven't lost the fight. I mean, they have a four-minute time bank for a reason. And Shock continue to get first bloods because there's no answer to the Tracer. And Victoria is just going to lose this. And oh, Robert no. playing with his food. Kaluji eats a blizzard. The spaghetti and all types of pasta are on the ground if you're Boston. I really wish they had brought in a Brigida to just have some kind of threat, some knockback against Proper. Man, the amount of spaghetti that's on the ground is certainly sussy. I think there's an imposter around here somewhere. San Francisco, four ultimates, four members. Finn finally died, gives them the nice. Ah, chewing on words for but a moment. Boston Uprising, this is their opening. No more Discord Orb, and there won't be an immediate transcendence. Well, Victoria's on the flank. He has to convert. Draws out the immortality from Violet. The first time Shock have been threatened in a while. But Kilo is the true danger on the field. And it's Uprising that are going extinct until Victoria finally hits a shot. Well, I mean, the damage has been done. Kilo killed like two or three people. So Uprising reset with 10 seconds left. 
Oh, now Prop wants to try and mess with their time back as well. Who's even going to touch here, Eleven? Valentine and MCD make the swap, so there's only five seconds remaining. I think Boston may have mismanaged this. Punk tried to hang on to the Gravitic Flux, didn't go to the Wrecking Ball. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, go touch Dragon. Go Dragon, contest the point for me. The, the point was not contested. And this is the second map in a row, Lemon, that ends with Boston staring at the objective with tears in their eyes. I mean, Shaq have so much time. They got time to type. <laughs> so, I don't know. Zero deaths from Violet. We're just getting word from our stats group. Like, yeah, Shaq, I mean, we were expecting Shock to 3-0. I just wanted to see what Boston were going to look like and what adjustments they were going to make. Because remember, they've played Eichenwald on this patch. Boston got full health. We talked about this by the Atlanta Raid, but just really, it's their DPS of Valentine and Victoria that have to figure out where they stand in this meta, and they're not adapting to the Sojourn. Their Tracer is, uh, their Tracer plays a question mark, but at Boston, they're resilient. Their mentals are strong. They've done this against the Justice 2 I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna tease it, but I'll see you after this break. <laughs>
back, everyone, from the break. Going into BAP 3, probably our final one. Shock. <laughs> uh, crazy pull hold at the end. Kaluj is eating up blizzards. Proper is playing with his food. It's, it's an entertaining match. I'm entertained anyway. Yeah, it's, it's a mixed family dinner. Someone eating the entire uh, best friend of Snowball versus someone who's just playing with their food. And then uh, someone who's taunting the lobster saying, I have zero deaths, by the way. And uh, Finn did end up with one death. Pushed his luck, got punished for it. Violet, on the other hand, kept his trap shut and finished Iconvold as the immortal God King. Zero deaths across a full completion and a full hold as well. Faith is in for Crimson Lemon, and that, to me, spells the presence of a future Brigitte, potentially. Alongside likely MCD on the Zen, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I, you know, you keep MCD on the Zen since that's what he's already been playing, and I, I've been kind of screaming into my mic. Uh, I try to, because I have the Zoomer flu right now, but uh, you need an answer to proper tracer, and I've been saying that. Boston, I know, heard something in the ethos, and they finally have brought Faith in. And I thought Faith had a spectacular performance against the Justice, really well-timed rallies. If he's even playing the Brigida, I hope that that is it. Because Boston don't have an answer to the Tracer. I mean, Victoria is trying his damn best on the Hanzo to, to get the lineups, but Proper is just circling him like a vulture. So <laughs> it, you need something to go after Proper. And if, it, if Uprising don't believe in the Tracer mirror, I, I would at least attempt it because this Hanzo it's just mechanically so demanding to try and get a headshot into a tracer before she recalls it and goes away. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. San Francisco Shark going to be starting off on the offense here. So let's have another look at this defensive composition. Valentine is once again going to be offering up the May here, which is interesting alongside this particular support composition, Lemon, because it allows for Valentine to be a little bit more self-sufficient. You have the self in that comes from the ice box. You can peel for yourself a little bit with that wall. And also, you continue to threaten that one-shot headshot with the icicle, which is... Uh, ideally, going to keep Proper from getting too aggressive, but we never Proper is currently playing with confidence. Boston Upper is going to go for the rare spawn halt here. They have a lack of healing in terms of a raw output of MCD on Punk, so they need to be careful to make sure Punk is well managed in terms of his healthiness. Otherwise, he could become a quick victim of a shock wraparound. Yeah, Boston, I mean, even just taking a fight here could also just reduce the time bank, right, by forcing more fights. But the fight is taking place where Victoria isn't even at. And Victoria's still getting in the position, has to make sure that he positions somewhere that's difficult for Proper to access. Now, Proper can access everything, but it's about the time that it takes for Proper to get there. And Victoria is already getting harassed by Proper, and so is the rest of the Boston Uprising, who didn't get a single kill throughout that. Sweet Christmas. Punk actually got absolutely destroyed there by Kaluj as well, who, by the way, is at 60% ult charge. Did so much damage to Punk. The second that Punk's shield broke, and he had to bring up a kinetic grasp, a direct hit from the accretion, cancelled all of the overhealth, and made sure that Punk was stunned with no means of defending himself. And then there was no real meat for Boston Uprising to put in front of a car. At least they have drained away a touch of time here, Lemon, but Boston Uprising now going to be fighting from behind and taking a huge amount of poke to enter point A. It, Victoria's just so scared of proper right now, and if you're gonna play this Widow, you need to get the picks, or else, like you said, Kalush has all this ult charge because Shock have the shield break comp. They have the Hanzo Stormbow that's gonna decimate Punk. Victoria gets assassinated by Proper, so if Victoria can't live against Proper, it's time to swap, buddy, unless we're just, you know, gonna make this a quick match. I know, shout out to Paris Eternal for tweeting out that they're excited that their match is gonna come so quickly because of this. Uh, also, Proper gets the Pulse Punk, and this is a clean sweep for Shock. Almost flawless, they lost Proper and Finn. There's some video gaming going on right here. Violet has the uh, amplification motions. Kaluch actually going to join him. San Francisco Shock, uh, they've got to be careful not to get, feed, get fed into an ego loop here, where they stagger themselves thinking, ah, it's always winnable with a San Francisco Shock. And Kaluch at the moment is kind of kind of got caught off guard by Boston Uprising exploiting what the Brigitte brings to this composition, which is the ability to jump off high ground and just try to overwhelm Kaluj. Boston needs to control this timing, but Kaluj can just send them all up into the air using the flux. Grab flux from Kaluj and great timing because Punk is just so low. No, it's actually delayed. Transcendence, great patience from MCD. And Valentine could be ready to fight out, fight back with a Blizzard at any moment. This is getting into close range territory where Boston's comp is going to look that much better. Rally 2, sustain for Faith and the friends from the Boston Uprising. 
And Victoria gets to snipe away when people have really easily readable jumps like that. So Boston gets to win a fight. I have a question for San Fran here as well, is how do you get to the high ground with Finn and Kalush? You have to wrap around the right-hand side here to make sure you can try and force Boston off, off there. There isn't really a huge amount of physical cover. So if Boston hold big girls, you're going to be at a major disadvantage when it comes to a poke. Instead, maybe try and control the opposite high ground to big girls, and that's what they're doing now, moving through this area. But they are going to be quite vulnerable to getting blizzarded at that door. I, I just don't think the top of big girls is even that big of a power position because it, the this advantage that the defense has, Shock can just play under it. And then Boston are left with having to contest the cart. So it's Shock have lost Kilo through a nice headshot. So Victoria at least having some presence there to the grab Flux. They deal with the back line. Violet picked the cart and Finn not wanting to use the Transcendence despite maybe being in range to help Violet. Probably thought he was going to die mid-air. So 30 seconds remaining. And by the way, Shock haven't capped A yet. Oh, Punk having to run away from that Dragon Strike, but Faith ever faithful at the back, and now you can see the fight for Big Earls is going to commence. Someone going to get frozen? No, Finn will keep Kaluj safe. That's a transcendence just to keep a Kaluj safe. That was the only person that got frozen up by that Blizzard. Kilo pushing the cart. Boston are taking the fight on the right side, and someone has to return to contest. And Punk is so low, and used the shield too late. It was probably all broken up and still regenerating, so... That took a long time for the shock to do, despite what we saw in Eichenwald. Uh, so good job, point A, Captain. Very different story to Eichenwald, and I think that Punk and Faith working together here is really making a difference, making Kaluj a lot more vulnerable. Whereas before, Kaluj was basically able to do whatever he wanted and try and take two versus three versus ones against Punk at his leisure. But now it's Boston who are able to have a little bit more of a forward driving force of a Brigitte behind them. Alas, now they have to move in through these narrow chokes against people like Kilo and Proper, and you know that Proper's looking for an early pulse here. At least Boston are able to get picks. It's not just Victoria getting assassinated by Proper all the time. And now this part of the map, it's going to be hard for Proper to get up on the high ground. You see that he's down below, and that's a huge craft flex from Kaluja. Got at least three people. Punk trying to protect what he can as he inspired from Fade Breaks. Tries to bring everyone up to full health, but this brawl from Shock is so disgusting. With Victoria missing, I mean, you're just going to have a natural damage advantage with Proper being involved and Victoria not. Yeah, in the midst of all of that, you need Victoria to be hitting the shots while people are distracted by that brawl. That's when you are at your best, when you have your play as the Widow, the off-angle against distracted targets. If you aren't hitting, you are negative value, and Boston yes, Uprose are going to be continually forced into five versus four scenarios. Valentine, an early pick off onto Proper. Those are the one-tap headshots I wanted to see, and it's backed up by Victoria's Infrasight to allow for the pre-aim. Yeah, Proper is just, like, rounding the corner. It's just going to go check where the... Contest was coming from Mombasa and just rounded the corner right into an icicle. So, lucky shot there. Five on four for the Boston Uprising. Trying to stabilize in the saloon side, but you got to keep in mind that their brawl is not going to be as good as the shot. And it's up to just protecting Victoria, who jumps right close to where Proper is. <laughs> and that is not who he wanted to beat up with. So, now there's a ground flux from the defense, getting the back line low as Punk tries to peel for his back line and isn't able to deal with Violet, who is an Ant Matrix up, spraying and fraying into Boston. But Boston are at least able to heal themselves back up thanks to a rally from Faith, and Boston just taking shelter from inside the room to under the bridge. Violet, though, still untouchable, pumping out heals at their leisure. I think Kaluj at the moment is in the propane room or something. Sana has killed Faith in the two versus one. Surely Kaluj can't survive this one. Punk is currently a hostage. A blizzard is behind him to freeze him up, and an overtime is in session. All transcendence from Finn uh, came in too late. Valentine killed four thanks to the blizzard, and Boston have held the shock at point B. And you saw just how passive Boston's play actually was a boot for them. They got to just get like a single pick and then just play so deep into the point where the shock had to approach and then proper as he's trying to gap close is getting picked off. So actually worked out just how non-aggression is actually good for the way that Boston are playing this comp. Yeah, it means that they are able to choose when these engagements begin. And it means that 
by playing passively, Faith is not being too outpoked where you are missing the, the presence of a gun, really, on the Brigitte, and instead being able to only move in for a battle when they know they can close the gap, be it with a shield bash or just with a drop down from the high ground. Boston Uprising are using San Francisco's uh, ability to just claim space almost freely to draw them into positions where Punk and Faith can crunch in on Kaluge and try and establish a tank differential early. Because if you're distracting Kaluge with the Brig Sigma dive, that means Victoria is not going to be shielded off and can try and find the openings. Yeah, I think this was the uh, 4K from Valentine. He saw that Punk was all by himself in the tiny room, and Boston used that as a bait. They threw the Blizzard as shock, all coming at 4 to 1 to go and kill Punk. <laughs> because Punk is so important to kill if they want to access people like MCD and Faith. So Shock walked into their death, and that was a great call by Valentine. That right, kill on proper so jammy, I'm putting it on my toast for breakfast tomorrow. Unbelievable there from Valentine. <laughs> Victoria just starts to spam away at the shield. Kaluge is not going to be in as vulnerable a position as Punk was for the early hold from the Boston Uprising. And so it will survive this initial onslaught, but it does give away a little bit more free car push for Boston. And a little bit more space for Victoria to try and work with as well, providing the info is going to be good from the rest of the team. Yeah, Proper just not going to bother with the Tracer, just it's kind of difficult to gap close with how far Boston are playing with their comp, and somehow Kaluge, I think, was on the high ground, just spraying and praying into Boston Uprising, and if Punk and friends are going to play main, they're going to be susceptible to Shock being on the high ground and getting orbs in their backline, so it might be good for Punk to rotate top left with the rest of the team, where Faith is, actually. Think, the thing that Hanzo brings to the table, though, is that if you take too long here at Boston Uprising to change your approach and don't go through the high ground early, if you allow proper to build up a Dragon Strike, it could be absolutely dooming if you get caught in one of these narrow caverns trying to access high ground, and proper can just tear through you with that. Kilo, though, on the sojourn, looking for these early rail shots. And remember, even if it's just a body shot, still does a bunch of damage. It could be easily followed up by proper or Kaluch. This is a good counter-rotate from Boston. They know that Shocker are going to have top cave. Then you just rotate right side and just play the distance back. Battle. They have information that MC, or not MCD, sorry, Kilo is on the flank due to the Venom Mine. And Victoria just 76 is away the competition. So the Shock tried to take angles around and didn't actually capitalize on anything. So Boston have a five on three. Somehow someone is contesting the card. Now I think that's just collusion. He just gets overwhelmed, of course, in a three on five. What can you do? Victoria, if you can get any more picks too, would be a great stagger to allow Boston to get a point A cap much quicker than the Shock did. But with Victoria gone, this could be the Shock trying to overtake. Proper might be able to clutch up here. A well-placed Sonic Arrow gives away all of the positions. And remember, only 20% away from that all-important Dragon Strike. Look how tightly everyone is bought in here. Victoria slowly returning to a fray is going to be on an off angle, but no longer is Big Girls a safe position for the San Francisco Shock to hide out upon. They need it, though, for cover from Victoria. Proper lies in wait. The Dragon may well feast well off the back of a Gravitic uh, flux from Kaluge. Yeah, and especially now that you have Faith in and not a Baptiste like Primso, you don't have an immortality to forgive a Dragon Strike if you're stuck in it. But it's about who's going to pull the trigger first on this Grab Flux fight. We've got Transcendence from MCD and not Finn. So Flux first from Kaluj. MCD with the Transcendence keeps everyone up. Now Grab Flux from Punk. Finn just in time with the Transcendence. And it's actually Shock that get a pick first from all those ultimates. And just turns and burns on Victoria and decimates the Uprising. We're taking shelter at the bottom of Big Earl. So 56 seconds remaining for the Boston Uprising. A big 5 alt moment there from the San Francisco Shock, knowing that they had to try and commit to that to make sure Boston Uprising could not continue to leverage this free position underneath. And now it means the San Francisco Shock are going to have to play with vanilla ability to try and beat out a rally and a blizzard. And the blizzard is going to be so important for cart control. You won't be able to beat out Boston Uprising if you fight on the cart here with the blizzard. You need to get an early pick, and that's down to proper and to kilo. Yeah, I like that Boston just rotate to the high ground, immediately zone them off. They're trying to close the gap between themselves and Kaluge. And just keeping also in range of Victoria, who's taking off angle. He's pretty safe in the cave. 
get some shelter. Shock on the high ground. Valentine want them to drop right into the blizzard. He doesn't have bicycle, but he does drop it without getting it canceled. But Valentine's on in this fight, and Victoria's low. He's playing safe. Boston don't have the damage to take advantage of this fight. And it's up to MCD and Faith to just keep Punk alive. Maybe he can brawl this out, because Keela was dead, but the rest of the Shock aren't even on the card. So Boston just cap in front of them. Oh, that is egregious from the Shock. We have had many a no-card touch in this particular game, and part of me wonders if MCD managed to zone people away from touching using the kick knockback. That would be uh, <laughs> that'd be an interesting new utility for Zen, but Boston Uprising. They are far from out of the woods. Victory is within grasp, Lemon. Two minutes on the clock, and about 70 more meters that need to be cleared by this payload. But now, you need to win this first fight to make sure San Francisco Shock cannot defend this for free from the high ground. This is the most important fight, winning the next one. And for usual, have grab flux. MCD's ready with Transcendence, with Finn a little bit further behind, but it's okay because Punk doesn't have his yet. Kilo's on the high ground. You gotta have someone from Boston that dislodges this, and Victoria is the only one that has the verticality to do so. And you see, he's trying to find angles, but gets rocked and socked, but he's not dead. MCD got probably a crumb of heels into him with the transcendence, and that was in response to the Kaluj grab flux that happened. Now, Shock starting to surround Boston, who are just very split apart, but Victoria has been so ignored. Clearly, not a threat on the radar of the Shock, and Victoria has killed three this fight. So the Shock are missing three people at Boston get to take, not only take over the high ground, but are one fight away from the box of victory. And Shock lost that slowly. That's an issue. Converging upon this objective as a group is going to be very difficult. Kaluj has moved over now to the Doomfist. Keela might have to move in by themselves, but no. Kaluj is there. The overclock from the back needs to be the difference maker. Is that Amp Matrix kind of whiffed? Who is using that? I don't know. I think but it was meant for Keela up top. Okay, I was, uh, that's a choice. But Shock have <laughs> yeah, back the is. high ground from Victoria, who almost had his dragon canceled. 35 seconds. Boston only have a rally. Maybe a pulse bomb if Valentine can get into that back line. And, if, and he already threatened spin. Transcendence used. No healing for Kilo. He gets pulled by Valentine. Boston have to sustain with the rally. But Valentine gets tossed up by the Doomfist. And Shock have no damage remaining. It's all about just living on this card. Because Boston are running out of time. And they're running out of members. Faith is just crawling away against Kaluj, trying to get the stun. Kaluj escapes. He gets healed back up by Violet. And Shocker just barely holding on to this. And MCD gets the frag at range. And Shock are just running out of steam. This is the Boston Uprising that looked like they were going to take the map until the supports, the flex supports, are the ones standing tall on the court. You only have two members of the Shock left. As the dust settles, time goes away. The Shock take a 3 0. But that was dangerous. Damn near close to not being that way. The man who did not die on Eichenwald, the immortal God King of Violet, staying alive, keeping everyone else up to the best of their ability, and allowing for Kilo, Proper, and Finn to start fragging out in the midst of these chaotic fights. This is where San Francisco Shock are able to find their differential over other teams. No matter the plan, when the chips are down, the mechanical skill of a San Francisco Shock is always going to bring them to a hearty victory, a 3-0 sweep. And San Francisco Shock with Kalud on the Sigma. This looks like a very powerful tournament cycle for them and maybe a better placement than they got in the kickoff clash, Lemon. Well, there was one player that got to play with this food all match long. The one that forced the substitutions, the one that was the biggest threat on the field, it's proper. He already started with a 5K on the Tracer on Eichenwald to spawn camping the Boston Uprising on Elios. Proper is disgusting. The desk had to at least mention his name once. And I mean, I'd be screaming it all day long after watching him play. Making him look silly, Lemon, but proper. As our player of the match didn't do it alone, we've got to admit that uh, we saw a huge amount of survivability and clutch factor from the flex supports as well. And Proper's ability to flex around as a hyperflex as well, bringing out that Hanzo, was a unbelievably valuable asset. So for San Francisco Shock, here's a quick look <laughs> at his Two stats. Ten. Two deaths for... Oh, sorry, I'm reading solo kills. Sorry, four kills still. That is very, very low. 
proper was disgusting on the tracer and i almost wish that boston just had a response quicker to that having faith's brig in obviously forced proper to swap off the tracer into the hanzo on route 66 but this you're just looking at one of the best tracers in the league right now and just having a uh, a player as flexible as proper too in a meta like this just shock seem meta proof now it did get a little bit close on route 66 for boston to take a map and boston at least are figuring out that they can lean a little bit more into the hanzo and maybe into the may but when it comes to the may the difference between eichenwald and route 66 was really the the timings and the placements of the fights when they would use the may on route 66 it was about just playing in these areas that were very small and for drawing the shock into tiny rooms where valentine got a 4k on the may but on open maps like Eichenwald, they just clearly, uh, it's very easy to counter the May in that situation. So they need another option than the May for uh, Valentine. Yeah, for the Boston fans, though, I don't think it's all doom and gloom just yet. I mean, it may be an 0-6 week, but we've got to contextualize that that was against the Atlanta Reign and the San Francisco Shock, two unbelievably elite teams. And I think with another week to iterate to try and figure out what they want to do in this manner, the Boston Uprising will start being a real threat to some of our mid and high table teams. However, that's all from this match. There are still two more to go, so grab yourself a snack and a drink, and we'll be back after this break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Welcome to Game Break, everybody. I'm here joined now by Finn from San Francisco Shock. Finn, congratulations on the win. Three Overwatch, a uh, very exciting match for you guys. Uh, for, for, for Boston, not so much. But I feel like for today, I think you had a lot of fun. Uh, and Eichenwald, uh, the map, I feel like, you know, I, in game chat, you were, you were poking a little fun at the Boston Uprising. Was that, you know, just out of pure confidence that you guys were just that much better? Or was it, you know, sort of just to the, just like rile them up in order for them to like, you know, it's like your way of telling them to focus up. Uh, 일단 첫 번째 질문은, 아, 질문을 하기 전에 피서스 오늘 승리 너무 축하드리면서, 어, 아이엔발데를 좀 얘기를 하고 싶어요. 좀 제가 봤을 때 너무 그게 너무 재미, 재밌기도 하고, 어, 귀여워서 이제 핀 선수가 굉장히 좀 재미를 많이 보신 것 같아요. 이제 좀 얘기도 많이 하고, 이제 채팅에서. 어, 그런 게 어떻게 보면 센 쪽에 대한 자신감에서 나오는 건가요? 아니면 진짜 그냥 장난으로 그냥, 야, 너희들 좀잘좀 좀 해봐. 좀 재밌게 좀 하자. 이런 도발이었나요? 어 저, 장난식으로 하긴 했는데 저희 실로가 영대 실로 영대세다가 그 상대 펑크 선수가 영 킬인 거예요. 그래서 어, 좀 놀리고 싶다라는 마음에 좀친것 같아요. Alright, I mean, yeah, it's, I think I do have to say that it was all it's, it's all joke and we were really joking around because, but at the same time, the fact was um, both me and Violet, we had zero death uh, up until I started chatting in in-game chat and I saw that uh, Punk actually didn't have any kills at all. So as a joke, but at the same time, I did want to sort of poke fun and tell them that, you know, we have zero deaths and you guys have zero kills. So that's what went down. But I think after this map, you know, they sort of came alive. But at the at the end, you guys still got clutch the win against the Boston Uprising. I do also want to say yours, uh, San Francisco Zenyatta, because I mean you've been killing it on the Zenyatta. But I know uh, Violet, your counterpart, is also very very good Zenyatta as well. So how does San Francisco Shock decide who plays the Zenyatta for this meta? Uh, 마지막 질문은 이제 핀 선수도 당연히 오늘 젠네터를 너무나도 잘해주셨고 항상 너무나도 잘하시는 선수이긴 하지만은 또 제가 알기는 또 옆에 계신 또 바이올렛 바이올렛 선수가 젠네터를 좀 그나마 좀 잘한다고 저는 들었거든요. 장난이고 저도 알고 있거든요. 그래서 이거를 이걸 이제 어떻게 누가 젠냐타를 하고 이, 이 어떻게 보면 이 결정을 어떻게 내리나요? 어 이게 바, 젠냐타는 이제 고정 픽에다가 이제 바티스트가 좀 브리기테라든가 이제 모이라라든가 아나라든가 이제 다른 캐릭터로 이제 바꿀 수 있게 하는 거거든요. 이제 젠 바티가. 그래서 이제 바티스트가 좀 유동적이게 바꾸, 바뀌는 네. 저희는 맨날 그렇게 하고 있습니다. Alright, so I mean for our, our team, San Francisco Shock, we have Zenyatta as like a fixed position, a fixed hero that we are all, we are always we always run. And so we want someone on the Batiste role to be more versatile. Uh, we need the Batiste player to be able to flex onto Ana, Brig, and etc. whenever the situation calls for. So that is why Violet plays uh, the Batiste most of the time and I'm on the Zenyatta. Interesting. Finn, thank you so much uh, for all those answers and again congratulations on the win. Oh, 너무나도 좋은 답변 너무나도 감사드리면서 핀 선수 이걸로 인터뷰 인터뷰를 마무리하도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Finn. Goodbye and congratulations to you and your entire team on that W. Now, the first two maps, they were very one-sided affairs uh, towards the shock. Uh, I mean, on Eichenwalde, Boston ended up with six fractional kills against 38 uh, from uh, the San Francisco shock, just to tell the story by the numbers. But let's uh, discuss what happened there on Route 66, because there was a very likely scenario of Boston Uprising actually winning it out. They had a good defense. And then during that last fight, uh, so you were molding. Yeah, I, I, I was upset and we're actually just going to look at that part for this match instead of looking at all the highlights because it was really the most interesting thing that happened in that match. Uh, Boston looking good with the Valentine May. It does have some redeeming qualities, but here's the final team fight. And before all this even happened, we saw Victoria holding onto his Dragon Strike and allowing the San Francisco Shock to come out the door. Instead of using it aggressively, forcing the position of the Shock, probably forcing the Finn Transcendence, he just lets them walk out. And for that reason, reason the shock get out they get a couple of trades and it ends up to be this 3v3 and in this setup you just saw here they were just letting 
uh, Finn stand on the sideline. They were letting him play instead of fo focusing yeah. down, rushing down the back line with their superior positioning. They just allow him to set up there and the shock, they are able to re-engage, they're able to find the positioning. They take all the control because they didn't deny that positioning from them at the beginning and it snowballs out of control. Another opportunity and sort of this defines the issue with the Boston Uprising. I like the way they're playing the game. I like the May actually. I think it has some unique uh, style that can force other you know, mistakes out of other teams. But if you're just not going to play to your advantages, you're not going to use your ultimates correctly, it's going to fall apart for you exactly like it did in Eichenwald. You also took some issue with their target calling there at the very end in the fight. You, you, if, if there's two supports and a tank left up, you should not stand there shooting at the tank, expecting the tank to die. They, it took them so long to take Kaluj down, focus the back line. They had superior numbers. They force that positioning. They take down the Zenyatta. It all snowballs down from there. But... You know, I, I, I'm it's sorry. Right. Yeah, I was no, okay. but you had to let it out. So now let we're, it out. Uh, you, Boston, you're welcome. <laughs> they're a good team. They're a good team. They're looking better. I like the way they're playing the game. Just it's those little things that are losing the matches. You know, it's the shock. They weren't expected to win. Yeah. But against these other teams, they need to fix those things up. Absolutely. But still, of course, uh, heads up of, uh, or hats off rather than heads up. Uh, it was a good defense uh, on their part on right. Route 66. So we hope to see more of that. Now just clean up the attack and we're good to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Let's head into our next match. That one will be fought out between the New York Excelsior and the Paris Eternal. Now, uh, reinforce. You think Paris is the, having the upper hand in this one. Why is that? I think they look pretty decent against the LA Gladiators just this week. Um, and I do think that they have pretty good players on their team as well. Like the back line is pretty consistent. I mean, you got Khan, who's known for his Ana play, but also the Senyata play being able to frag out. And we've seen other successful teams in this meta, whether it's Shu, Finn. Uh, I'm even going to throw in Quill in there for the Washington yeah, Justice. Like, yeah. You can really <laughs> pop off on Senyata. So Khan, able to make a name for himself here for the Paris Eternal, but also similarly for the New York Excelsior, I think both teams have a chance to prove themselves in this matchup. New York Excelsior, the 1-6, Paris Eternal, 0-7, looking for their first win. These are two teams that aren't like, they're not bad, as in like we had some historically bad franchises like back in the day, some bad lineups. Both of these teams, like they have good individually skilled players and we expect them to put it together. So this is an opportunity for both teams to really show us what they got and what they got cooking because I think we both agree or all of, four of us agree that both of these teams should perform better than they have so far. Absolutely. And I mean, Paris yet yeah, don't have a W on the board right now, but also they went through uh, several big changes have, within their roster have, yeah. as well, which you have to take into account. And their losses, they've been close losses, as we like to call them. So it wasn't like they were complete stampedes uh, and you have to give them that much credit. However, I still went with my New York Excel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, I've got to have I'm catching up to do here yeah. on the desk. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm way behind. Uh, either way, we are ready for this a match. Everything on the line for both of those teams. And for all the action, we're going to send it over to Matt and Mitch. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you know, we've got three of the teams in a bottom three playing in these next two yeah. games. So me and Matt obviously got called up, especially for these. The bear, the bear sweater here. wasn't ready for this one. <laughs> I, I didn't, I, I, you know, I thought I'd wear my, my Sunday best. The bear sweater wasn't ready. I mean, well, Sunday best for two super matches on uh, on our super day here with four games, Matthew. Let's let's dive in here. I want to put this out there. I'm available. I'm on the yeah. market. I'm ready to be wooed by either of these teams, right? Paris showed a great debut in Dove yesterday, coming out on the Widowmaker. Very impressive. There are a lot of these players that are now, finally, years into the Overwatch League, we're actually getting some half-decent scouting from Western contenders. Uh, and teams like Paris are in a good position to showcase that talent. New York are in a position to showcase champions of, of contenders uh, over in Korea. But, so far, haven't been able to do that with this roster. Very disappointing for New York. I, 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 yeah, I, the I expectations were high. I'm a bit upset with this New York roster because, yeah, I thought that they would be... Did I think they'd be, like, in the top, like, four of, like, the West? No. Did I think they would, like, contend to be in the top, like, eight? Yeah. Uh, I think oh. they have that type of... Uh, oh, hey, what's up, Griff? He's got a Paris Eternal shirt on, so I guess... That's, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> where where did you get that? Yeah, uh, don't, don't ask. Don't ask. You got it somewhere. Hey, hey Griffin. All right, so well, Griffin's behind the Paris Eternal today. Man, I will growing. be wooed by... Yeah, he's big. He's, uh, he's quite big. You know well, what, you know, though, he's, Matt? He's young. He's allowed to make bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is there a good? Is there a really a good pick here? Like, realistically, do uh, you think there's a there's a team that you want to get behind in this matchup? You really think is going to come out? Of no, not necessarily. I think uh, New York. They've been underwhelming in terms of like the level of talent they have. 
uh, Paris, I think they've done a nice job like adding new talent and incorporating them. And I think there is uh, something positive going on there. Uh, new York starters, nothing surprising here. Uh, I, I mean, you look at this lineup and just the names on paper, right? They should be good. Uh, oh, man. For this team, though. We live in an era where something positive going on, uh, especially in days like these, doesn't necessarily mean it's good for the team overall, right? I, w I need to see more from Flora. Kellen won a contenders championship in a meta where it was like wrecking ball against like Baptist yeah. Briggs and setups. This is, you know, where he thrived on, on that roster. So it's time. It is time for New York to stand up and show that they actually have this insane team. How many more teams is Yaki going to join? They're just don't get anything started. We really thought yeah, this I, would be the start of him, you know, heading into the stratosphere now with the right team around him. So far, though, that's still in question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you look at the roster, like I mentioned, and this team on paper, you put it next to some of the other teams that are even a little bit higher than them, and you like some of the talent uh, more on this team than some of the others. They just have not been able to put it together. Uh, you know, Kellen, we had high hopes for. Yaki and Flora is a combo. Uh, you know, Myungbung and Gangnam Jin. Like, all these players, like, combined, you think would be sick. It just has not resulted in anything thus far. Uh, for Paris, uh, they're they're making moves, man. Like, uh, I like the support line of the Paris Eternal. Uh, Jujo and Khan. Uh, Khan on the Zen, specifically, has been sick. Uh, Dove and Wub as a DPS lineup. Uh, you know, young, up-and-coming players. Uh, I think they're, like, you can actually see Paris, like, kind of, like, building towards more of, like, a future, right? Uh, where, for New York, their, their roster looks much more in, like, a compete now type of mode, which they're not doing. Yeah, exactly. I think that for Paris, like, people are willing to give this team a little bit of a grace period, right, as they integrate this, this Dove and Wav front line. I've got to say as well, not much, you can't get much of a grace period though. Like you don't get the whole well, season as the grace. How period. much do they get? You tell me how much how much they get, and then we can start I, being, I, then we can start giving them a lashing. I mean, look, I think I think you see how they go through this midseason madness. You have the midseason break. Uh, you have an opportunity to you know get Dove and Wub up to speed, right? Like Wub, like he hasn't even played that many games in Owl yet. Uh, Dove, I mean, we don't even got a picture for him. I mean, that tells you how new he is. Uh, <laughs> so, so you know, we. You got to give them time uh, to get kind of used to like the uh, scrim schedule and the level of play, everything that comes with being a professional player. I think you kind of give them through this mid-season madness, you give them through the mid-season break, and then you kind of judge them a little bit more seriously coming out of that. Yeah, the reality is, of course, is that qualification for the mid-season madness tournament is, is contingent actually on your kickoff clash qualifier performance as well. So it's a little bit harder to fix the errors that you had in that stage one because we're heading into an international tournament, one where we're trying to assess the teams on how they've been through the entire gear so far. So neither of these teams are in a great position to make a run, but they can do it. They basically have to win out from this point on. And that's no, that's no small feat. Now, I want to point I, out as well, uh, I hope to see Dan play that Wrecking Ball map because I think that yeah. was one of the, the better looks for Paris when he when he got to pick it up here and there. I think he's a really, really good main tank player. So just to it, show some of that versatility will be good. In my these games are still important for these teams, even though like mid-season madness qualification is pretty much out the window. Uh, because for the Countdown Cup at the end, right, which determines our overall season playoffs, uh, the top six in NA, they'll get auto-qualified, but then seven through 10 play for those final two spots. So as long as you're not in the bottom three in NA, you have a shot at the overall season playoffs. They're in the bottom three! They have I mean, well, I mean, you're trying to get out of it. You're trying to get, All right. you're trying to, trying to get out. Well, the good news is, Matt, they only need uh, two wins to uh, to put themselves in contention to get out of there. But a good start. You can get the halfway there, there with one of the... You know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's all on the table at this point, Matthew. Gun careening over the edge for whatever reason there. Perhaps it was a boop, some assistance from Gangnam Jin. Either way, Paris playing this Lucio in this Arna setup here. I'm surprised to see Drutro the Lucio here. Definitely looking oh, to make nice some impact, shot. but that's a nice connection by Wub there. Yaki is grounded. Yes, uh, you know, with how good we've seen Sojourn been, uh, playing like squishier heroes, right? Like Tracer is very difficult. And then even the Echo in the sky, it's very difficult to tell when the Sojourn's like fully charged up or uh, how much charge they have in general. And then for Yaki, we saw it the other day, uh, you know, another team played Echo into the Sojourn. It's not great. Uh, you know, the Sojourn able to really make I know high impactful plays like get like two kills in a fight like relatively easy against comps like this. 
Good start for Paris here. Dubs Tracer, a chance to shine a little more now with a pulse bomb in the back pocket and Myungbong looking a little tasty, but it had to be a recall from Dub. Done, and Wub able to do the work that had to be done, but Wub could afford the sticky bombs there as Yaki starts to extend a little further into this front line and cleans up Dub. The focusing beam there had the amplified damage as his target was low on health anyway. Yeah, Dom though gonna be able to contest this for a little bit longer though. He's gonna come down, Meteor Strike, got the power block there. Now going to have to back up. But look at this, Jojo on the <laughs> on the point. They have sound barrier. They oh, keep no, this going. Back. Yeah, they're gonna keep this going. Doofus returns with the Nanobus, and Myungbong again is gonna be turned into scrap. Yaki's seen better days, and a pulse dropped at his feet. He didn't have the fight cooldown to get back up in the air, so he's susceptible to the blast. Kellen will be allowed to retreat. But in the Excelsior, had to come up with something Do they, they didn't even have to use the sound barrier there. Uh, Drudro still has the sound barrier. As you'll have Rally, Transcendence, and Minefield. I mean, pretty much all five ultimates here for New York. You've got to get some usage out of this stuff. Dan just plunges in with a defensive biotic grenade on him, no less. Here's that sound barrier. Drudro looks like that probably was interrupted there. At least his target was done. He wasn't able to give it over to him. Not ideal. 99 now, and it looks like New York, yeah. They're surging ahead. They know they need to get back in the round now. Yeah, you're okay giving this up, though, if you're Paris. Uh, they ended up having to invest pretty much everything there. So, Yaki, the duplicate, he'll get a recall here. He'll be able to live for a little bit longer. Is this something about Mary? <laughs> Good stick, though. Nicely done. Got something out of the duplicate. Now he'll have to back away. Paris here to come up with the answer. The Echo playing in a somewhat hostile situation against the Sojourn, but Yaki's getting value. Yeah, you'll have the overclock here. You're also, that's going to be the transcendence early. You're also going to end up getting another nano boost here. Sticky bombs on Bob. No, charged up. Ultimate in tow. Going to push up and play some close range rails. Oh my god! Oh, I, I really feel like the expectation is nothing short of excellence if you're a Sojourn player right now. We've seen all of these top DPS do disgusting it's wild things that some, on it. It's, it's wild some teams just aren't playing it. Uh, so we've seen uh, the Sojourn be really effective thus far as Paris look really good here in our first point. It'll be Gangnam Jin getting to the point, trying to keep this one going. He'll drop as everybody just kind of come, come in, stagger for New York. Oh, oh see ya! Mjumpog probably hit the uh, invisible wall there. Uh, he, was, he was knocked a hell of a long way off the map. Nice clean up by Duff here. Doesn't have to use the pulse bomb. Was probably holding on to it in case Kellen got close enough. But that'll be enough for the Eternal there. Great start to the round and the finish was... In the 43%, like, it looks like this was, like, relatively close, but it really wasn't. It was just one fight that New York was able to win. And... I mean, I think you gotta... If you're New York, you kind of had to come into this series and being like, look, Paris not won a game. They look pretty terrible. They've replaced a DPS player brand new coming into this week. Like, this is a series you should take command over, right? In control. Uh, to lose that poorly there in that first round is quite, quite tough. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. Look. Yes. That's, that's what we collect from the round. Thank you, <laughs> EBS operator. I was glad to see that one. It happens sometimes. Don played good on the busy. Doom. That Absolutely. One, that one wasn't that good, but the rest was really good from Don. Uh, here's what I wanted to see, the Wrecking Ball from Darn now. Paris have done on that Tracer again, but they're switching to now that they're Brig and that Zen set up. You really like this though, with Khan on the Zen, right? And he, his Zen is yeah, sick, yeah. so... You know, with how Wub was playing on the Sojourn, now you bring in the damage from Khan's Zen. Oh, wow, uh, okay. <laughs> Someone just got put in a gelatinous cube. Nicely done by Yaki. Forced the recall instantly from Darkman. He wasn't in the fight when he had to be, and the target focus has been sublime here for New York early. It's Dreamtro and Khan, the first casualties. Yes, Yaki can fly down with a focusing beam, picks up a few during that fight. So, the kind of the Paris Eternal they go for to play in the point, they go towards that back. They actually throw the disruptor shot like back almost on the supports, trying to deter some type of dive, but does absolutely nothing as New York able to come in, wipe the floor of the. Up here trying to play to his optimal range. Unfortunately, a little tough to play from here because most of his opponents here play back at the point and the fall off plus the sort of spread from Sojourn along the range means it's a little hard to charge actually. You really want to try and do it defensively as you get dove. So Paris taking their sweet time. Done. Up onto the point now to start the contest. Yaki given that harmony orb as Milmong needs to avoid that disrupt. The shot! And he avoids the ground as well. Yeah, the disruptor shot there is great. Because you can't they can't poke and like see the middle of the point. They have to move towards one of the sides and 
Dunge rolls on in. That's not what we mean by the floor is lava, though. Young Bomb. Flora, Pulse Bomb, great connection on Dree Droish. Yeah, but nice little slap from Dub. Power's going to maintain a little bit more point control, at least for a little longer here. Eventually, though, looks like they got ruined out in the courtyard. So what Dub was able to do was really only a drop in the well. Yeah, so uh, New York takes the point right back. So Paris Eternal, not really able to get much of anything going here. So uh, see from the overhead POV, do you have the minefield? Bye. Discord down onto Flora as they're going to back him up a little bit. Eyes on Dove here. Definitely been generating a lot of threat so far in this round. Can he and Dan, Dan rather link up? Quite a little spread of the minds on the point. So Dan already trying to cover a specific entrance. Or, oh, again. Oh. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Yumbong is... Yeah. Look, I mean, the guy, you've seen him get salty. There's no way he's going to be pleased about that. That guy is hard on himself. And that's going to start getting into your head. Annoying is Dan. Again, picks him off. But overextends and maybe overestimates the safety of the health pack there. Yeah, and the rally comes through. Maybe he did not expect the rally coming in here. It's rally from both Oh, no, sides. you're uh -oh. kidding! I see. Well, then. I mean, Paris is going to retake the retake the. So Wrecking Ball obviously gets stronger in terms of, like, environmental potential. Uh, you also have Zen with a kick and then uh, Brigitte with a whip shot. So lots of uh, dangerous things going on in the back of the point there with in terms of experiment uh, environmental uh, skills. <laughs> it feels yeah. experimental. Some of the positioning has been experimental, like, you know, trying to find the first law of physics by throwing things off a cliff. That's experimental. Dump. Pulse bomb there, but what's going to be able to catch Yark as he tries to dump altitude. The transcendence is fine unless you're headshot by this. Wob eventually going to clean Gangnam Jim up and Myungbong's not in much of a position to have impact post-transcendence here. Heal the crunch and all of a sudden Paris back in control, they're back in the lead. And you look on the New York side, what do you have to work with here coming in? Uh, not really much of anything and Don has that minefield to spread all over the point, makes it very difficult to contest. You know, like a transcendence to get in there. Could be Paris going to have to take. <laughs> Kellen not able to be shifted there, of course. That's, his his not, not great. Here. It doesn't really cover a lot of the point. I guess if buys time means no one's going to run at Dan, because there's not a lot of healing available. I'm surely no. Okay. Blink there from Flora. Doesn't get knocked off the map this time around. Kellen, no water damage there. Great focus in a pinch. Parasite will eliminate the main tank for New York. One very charged up here. Yeah, that's a ton of damage. Forces Flora away once more. Fantastic cleanup for the Eternal here. There might be zero in seven. But they're going to start this series off with a win. Good looks from Paris here. We got Wrecking Ball, we got Doom Fist Base comps. Both of them, Chef's Kiss. Yeah, they looked much better than New York there in map number one. I think Wob on the Sojourn was sick, and I think as you see the series go on, if he's able to play that hero and Khan can continue this Zenyatta play, Paris Eternal looks primed to potentially get their first win. New York a little flat so far. Let's see if they can find some yeast. And attain the grain. They go too far. We got that number two. We're out of the corner. He just makes things rise. You know, stops from being flat. Don't rise up. No.
Well, it's been a tough start in this season for the Paris Eternal, Matt. They have a brutal schedule uh, in our kickoff clash qualifiers. They have multiple, you know, personnel changes. The most recently, of course, Glister departing their roster. And still this team, plucky as they are, are showing us more depth than we've seen yet. Yeah, and it seemed like uh, Glister, obviously, it was uh, a mutual parting. Probably yeah. just didn't really fit with kind of how uh, the roster was evolving moving forward and just kind of ag agree it's not the right I fit. Mean, Where Vistola will come in for Don here for the second map, uh, I expect some more off-tank play. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, we're heading to a map that has a bit more verticality here where, uh, you know, perhaps that that's going to be required to some degree. I, you know, we, we kind of know what Eichenwald gives us. A lot of teams have been going towards sort of Sigma-based compositions. Not all of them. Uh, as we know, the Outlaws still like to play Doomfist on this particular map, but you're right, Matt. With Vistola in, it, it telegraphs to us a little bit about what Paris want to do. So far from Dove, we obviously saw a lot of Widowmaker. We've seen Tracer here on control. So our understanding of their map pool is starting to expand here, but there was a little disappointing start from New York, Matt. I mean, this is a team that hasn't had roster changes, uh, you know, has had a fair bit of time to try and sort of find their strengths here. And in, a, in a, a new meta, a new opportunity to showcase talent like Yaki, for example, they're still unable to put enough pressure on Paris early. They're also full of veteran players too. Uh, obviously, yeah. you know, uh, Drujo Khan, Bistola, uh, in the league last year. But Dove and Wolf are completely new, like really new uh, in terms of uh, how they're playing. And then really on the other side, you just have Kellen. Uh, but Kellen is a very accomplished player. As, uh, now we have Flubber flicking up the Sojourn. Okay, so let's see if this kind of evens the odd uh, here, because Wolf was really destroying uh, on the Sojourn in map number one. Yeah, I'm curious to see you understand the if this is a better result for New York. We know that Flora was probably most situation. known for uh, hey. being a prolific Ash Hello. player, right? I think that when we saw New York competing in, in APAC in the Eastern region, as we saw a lot of Flora, and that's where a lot of these most promising moments originated from. And I'm getting the impression, Matt, that the skill, that the floor of impact for Sojourn players is quite high. So even players that we don't maybe rank in the top echelons of DPS players are able to do some really filthy things with the hero after her changes. Well, you hit those right clicks and that's where she does most of her damage. Uh, you're able to get a, a right click onto somebody full charge if they're a little bit of the squishier target with like Zenyatta and Tracer in the mix. Like you're going to be able to pick up one of those kills rather quickly. I mean, worth mentioning that Wub had the option to play the Sojourn here as well, but has gone for the Hanzo instead. Maybe looking to pressure some of those sort of medium range hit scan play, but it's gonna have to be dumped here to try and bail the Eternal out of this situation. Sure enough, Floor is down. Gangnam Jim, ha he has a uh, Hall of Harmony on him, so a little hard to run that, but he's down with a self healing. Looks like New York have been able to hold ground for the time being, and you see the respect that Yaki still extends to a player like Khan. Uh, and this is rough for Paris. You have three players here who are going to end up staggering out pretty long. 